Hey y'all, what's up? What's up? Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, we are back for another episode of the Ooh Ladies First panel. We thank you guys so much for waiting patiently for us, as you guys always do. Okay, let us go ahead and get a few things out of the way. All right. If you are on social media, definitely follow all of us. Okay. The names are the same on everything. Okay. At Jamie, that's me, at Bondi Blue, and EC Dixon. That's on Instagram, Twitter. Tiki Talk. What else we got? I think that's probably it. Instagram mm -hmm. primary. That's primarily where y'all gonna find us. It's over there on Instagram and also on the Twitter. You feel what I'm saying? So make sure you guys are uh, following us. Be sure to subscribe to all of the channels as we do rotate. Okay, on a weekly basis. All right. Um, and you also can follow the Ooh Ladies First um, on Twitter and Instagram as well. And feel free to email us if you have any questions, comments, concerns, and stuff like that. You feel what I'm saying? Are you ladies ready? Yes. Ready, ready. Let's get into it. What's going on, y'all? How are y'all feeling on this day after Valentine's Day? How was y'all Valentine's Day? It was, was nice. good. Oh, it was good. Bondi, I saw you make um what was it that you posted? It was cute. Oh, <clears throat> there we got this. Some edible arrangements, some roses and oh. some edible arrangements, some chocolate covered strawberries and like little cheesecake. And in like uh, chocolate brownies, uh, was it was nice. all so very good. Like literally, it's all gone now. Oh, all yeah, gone. that's all I wanted was chocolate covered strawberries, and mm -hmm. that's what I walked home to. I was like, yes. And then it Ted made steak and potatoes and broccoli, oh, and I just sat nice. there and was like, yes, cook it all up. I love that. Mm -hmm. I got chocolates and this big beautiful um red roses bouquet was so pretty and we ended up going out to eat to a mediterranean spot but i wanted to go in the daytime because i really don't on valentine's day y'all i do not like going to dinner because yeah, i, I feel either. like the traffic be stupid i don't want to make a reservation and still gotta wait so i'm like mm -mm, we need to go during the daytime like that's dead i'm not going out here fooling with these folks so it was definitely, you know, nice, you know, then got on live and hopped on, you know, chit chatted with the people and stuff. But yeah, so I have some questions. OK, and we're going to start off with our first question. Make sure as you guys come into the video, you are liking up um, the video. OK, and you are subscribing if you're not already subscribed. OK, so my first question is I saw this over on Armand's page. Shout out to Armand. Um. The question was, should your friends stop being friends with your ex? And I was like, that would be a great conversation for us to have. So I wanted to get you ladies thoughts on that. I th the way y'all looking is giving us different layers to yeah, things. It is. Is. That's, uh... Now, see, with me, it, I, for me, I don't put myself in a position to be friends with my friends, ma'am. Right. I make it clear, kind of like I don't follow them on social media or anything like that. Like it's understood that I'm cool with you by way of this person. Yes. So if y'all break up, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm rocking with her whichever way she's trying to go. And that's it. Now, I, ha I have had their um their guys like follow me, but I don't follow back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I guess they think, oh, we're cool. That's my girl's, you know, friend, whatever. Right. Like, no, 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 no. Uh, so I wouldn't have that, that issue to stop being friends because I don't make friends with them to begin with. Mm -hmm. That's fair. There we go. There we go. Um, I don't really make friends with them like that. And like me and you know, me and Larry, friends that we do have are somewhat mutual. <clears throat> but I know that the friends that we do have that are mutual, like there's one of them, which is my cousin. Like, we just gonna have to share him. Um, everybody else, I'm sure, you know, they will choose lyric. If there's ever a divorce, everybody would choose lyric. You think so? Everybody would choose lyric. What? Everybody chooses lyric. Lyric, lyric's the guy. Like, you know, he's he's the he's the but you don't think they would just be friends, both of y'all. Like oh, I mean yes and no. Um, like I don't think anybody would act bad with me or anything like that, but we're not really close like that to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um but we do like because we went to college together. We do have like a set of people that we are both cool with and friends with. But um, as far as like, you know, like you said, I'm not really friends with any of them like that. Like this, my girl, like y'all cool. We cool. That's great. But this my home girl or this, mm -hmm. you know, this my homeboy. This is my friend. Um, So just know like my relationship with him, her, whatever is going to come before my relationship with y'all. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? 
Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I thought about this two ways. So, <laughs> when the question says, should your friend stop being friends with your ex? Yes. My friend should stop friends with my ex. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. We don't know him at all. <laughs> um, I agree. But I thought about one moment, like, with shoe on the other foot, other foot, one time specifically i was still really cool with one of my friend's ex but it was not like a guy it's two gay guys in a relationship okay. and we all were friends in college we all grew a bond around the same time and then my friend also was the one who was the reason why the relationship ended he was he was wrong he was wrong so i mean i stayed out their business but i still kept a relationship with his ex-boyfriend which i feel like is fine Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you stay like out of it. You're not like in no arguments. You ain't in the shit and all of that. Then yeah, nah. Mm-hmm. But other cool. than that, I feel like with like the heterosexual relationships, mm-hmm. I'm not ever gonna get close to nobody, man, like that. To right. be like we still hanging out with them, you know. Even though you say heterosexual, it makes me think about okay. So like I was in a somewhat abusive relationship in high school. Mm-hmm. And my like little cousin, by way of you know, my mom is her godparent. That type of situation. She decided to remain friends, you know, or be cool and cordial and want to talk and shit with my ex girlfriend, who I feel like after everything she said to me and how things have been between us, you don't need to be cool with her. Like that's how I. F- mm. She felt otherwise. We have not really been that cool since because that bitch told me she didn't care whether I lived or died. You oh, should draw yeah. a line at some point. Like oh, yeah. you to tell me that, oh, what happened with y'all don't have nothing to do with me. I can still be cool with her. That's fine. That's a decision that you made. And we ain't really been that cool since. Yeah, mm-hmm. some things, some things you got to take a stance on. And if she didn't take a stance on that, I would stop fucking with her, too. Like mm, even, though, even though me and the ex like years later and I mean like a decade plus later like you know talked worked through the issues kind of became cool but we're still not like talking to each other friends like that so yeah. if you are that's some weird ass shit to me you know what that's I'm saying like, mm-hmm. yeah well I guess that does show who friend they are I don't know I don't be liking to kind of put people in compromising situations where they have to choose but then also I ain't been in no situation similar to you where a mother would say some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? To either of the friends. Cause yeah. like, I, I don't know. I just like, cause I have like, you know, two friends. Um, they don't really talk and it ain't got nothing to do with me. You know, um, I'm not going to discuss you with her and vice versa because I will want the same respect, respect. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to cut your friendship off with somebody. I just ask that y'all don't discuss me. You know, um, but I mean, I guess it does. It, it just depends on the circumstances or what the situation is, you know, um, ultimately. But yeah, we, we don't know that nigga. We don't know. And there's what that. Do you, what it to me? We don't know. We and don't my know. friends are like me when it comes to like, you know, my man, like they don't be forming no relationship. It's, it's clear that it's like we cool with you by way of her. Right. So if it don't work out, then you be rocking with her whichever way. So yeah okay so that's that y'all continue to leave y'all thoughts and comments on this question here in the chat okay um let's go ahead and move on because i want to talk about the super bowl okay i want to talk about usher's bowl yes super bowl it was nice for usher to let them play on his night um i think usher did a a great job I did. Um, I can't even. Oh, you know what? I do know what my favorite part was because that's what I was gonna ask y'all. What was y'all favorite part of the show? It was uh-huh. him skating. It was oh. him bringing the rink to the um to the field. I really liked that. I thought Usher did a great job. I think the mic was on. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't giving heavy breathing or anything. Um, oh, yeah. he looked great. Uh, I just thought he did. He did a really good job with the time frame that he had. Definitely. We're going to let Nisi go last because we know she's going to be right this up for us, okay? <laughs> but I'm just going to say, like, my favorite part was when he was ticking around the mic and the mic was moving. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was my yes. favorite part. And just his overall, like, um, gliding through the performance. Like, it, mm-hmm. it looked so easy for him. Like, he was just, 
you know, gliding from one move to the next, from one stage to the next. And you know, it's hard. You know that it takes a lot of stamina. You know what I'm saying? What he's doing. So like just the over the overall um, work ethic and showmanship and style of the situation mm -hmm. like he did excellent to me i i thoroughly enjoyed it. it it happened too fast as far as i'm concerned go ahead easy yes okay that the, your last comment of it happened too fast that was my only like that was my only feeling of not feeling completely fulfilled by the time it was over but at the same time, he did so much and he did it good. He did it real good. My favorite part was when he started singing Superstar to his mama and the camera panned out to the crowd. Oh my gosh, y'all. I was like, this we is made so it. beautiful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, I felt like he could have had his shirt off a little bit longer. It was only off about two seconds, but that's all right. Um, I liked the guest appearances. Um, I think Alicia Keys look good. She did. That note. That note. <laughs> like, listen, whenever Alicia Keys started out with her own song, mm -hmm. I was like, Usher, I know you didn't secure an extra two minutes for us to hear some people. Want no. I can't. Secure the extra two minutes for, for your shit only is how I was feeling. But she looked good. So I feel like that, that made up for it. Her looked amazing. I Ooh. also thought that Jermaine Dupree with CeeLo Green. I was like B-I-T-C-H. Oh. No, really. it was when given, he, yeah. CeeLo lost weight for sure. I was like, hold on. like that's to the point to where okay, I was like, Alicia Keys, this makes sense. My boo. Um, when I seen Jermaine, I was like, hold on. Well, I thought it was CeeLo. I was like, we got everybody out here. Like, do Usher got a song with CeeLo? You don't need all these people on the stage. Um child lyric though, will I like, was Kanye. Cut it out. Oh. Like, Did you know? was, I thought that was Kanye. I was like, what? It happened? was right up Kanye's alley to put a mask on and perform with somebody. It was. Did y'all hear the people saying they thought that her was Northwest? I they saw were that. They was, they was. First of all, whoever those people are, fuck you. Um, <laughs> her is incredible. And how are you? Um, no, for real. She kills on that fucking guitar. Like, oh yeah, she bad. The way you want to play guitar, her plays guitar. Mm -hmm. And that I just, girl was the perfect song for her. Like, I just be wanting to throw my panties at the stage whenever mm -hmm. I see her pull the guitar out. It just does something for me. You know what I'm saying? The hair, the glasses. Like, she just be swagged out. I love it. Um, yeah. that was like my favorite accompaniment because. I was mad that Ludacris didn't come out for situation. Mm. Will because I love his verse on that. You know, don't leave your girl around me. True player for real. As, girl, I'm a player. Girl. Don't, that's my part. So I hate the fact that he didn't come out until after. Um, and then Alicia Keys was not just pitchy once. Mm -mm. First of all, I remember thinking, all right, Alicia, don't fuck this up. And before I could get the thought completely out, oh, I want it. <laughs> me and my sisters look at each other so irritated. And when she hit that note, we looked at each other like, this is why. This is why the fuck. <laughs> this is why. This is why. I told There's Usher. No reason for it. Like, these notes aren't high. This is in your, like, and, and you should change it if you can't reach them anymore, Alicia. It's okay. You don't have to scream them and crouch your neck mm -hmm. like this and have the veins. Now, where is Miss Jan? Where are the vocal coaches? Some, like, give a, you could, you could yeah. whisper that shit. The white girls, Billie Eilish whispered through a whole song on the Grammys. You mean to tell me you can't find a way to not crack? Just take this shit down a few octaves. This is disrespectful right. for you to keep, you know, putting us screaming. Always I feel screaming. like if you're this gonna talk about life. what what was the song, um, my boo. So I, it's not. How does my boo go? Is that song about exes? But you feel my boo several times. She started when you were younger. You were, you were mine. Mine. Yeah, yeah. Another could have did that with yeah. Summer Walker. Summer, y'all could have did good, yeah. good with Summer Walker. Oh yeah, she if was. We were gonna do that. Oh. I would have preferred that. For sure. We didn't have oh, that. that. Was, but I, I, maybe he was trying to keep it more up. That ain't even an upbeat song. No, so good, no. good is upbeat. Good, good, good would have been better than this one. He owned Alicia something. He no, could have no. did. Don't waste my time. That was, was Jay Z's doing. 
Alicia Keys had not sung a bad until this girl on fire came as I'm concerned. No, literally. It was teenage love affair. I was still fucking with it. I loved it. Then as soon as she did Girl on Fire, I was like, what is this screaming shit? They had her performing it everywhere. And then she got on the Super Bowl and started screaming. I'm like, what is going on? The people I think on they Twitter spent too much time. Up. Up. You said what, Jenny? The people on Twitter was in her up saying her vocals ain't been right since she took that lady hood spin. I was like, y'all are no, horrible. Her was still right when she took that lady husband. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. I don't know. Listen, the last two minutes for me with Usher, because I was asking, like, why did they give you the two minutes? It was the yeah for me. The time he stood on the stage at the end and just kept saying, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, Usher, give us another song. Because that shit was about, yeah. The world to the A. I'm like, Usher, that's like 30 seconds, baby. You're not even really from there. Never mind. You could have gave us a little bit more. Like, Why? I, I mean, he nice did great slow. though. I will say that. He like, he's still nice and slow. Because if he would have gave us nice and slow, at some point he slowed it down and made it feel like it was lasting longer. Did yeah, he even all do he did my was... way. No, Mm-mm. no, he didn't. He started with caught up. I think that was the oldest one he did. <sighs> Well, listen, Usher, it's okay. I'm going to be up at 10 a.m. in the morning, okay? I'm going to have a timer on, and I'm going to try to slide in there. You, you see, he, he or added a fourth show. He did, I around waited. my birthday. Yes, he did. I I'm like, okay. Waited. I'm praying to God I can get some good tickets, because, girl, the way these people acting. Uh, make sure, I done bought two tickets to um two of the Dallas shows. <laughs> I knew you but, was going to do it. But, hold on. <laughs> I'm selling the other set. I don't need to go to both. The, the reason why is because, well, both of them are on the floor. But the reason why is because I bought tickets to the first night. And I'm kind of annoyed. I don't know what his management is doing. Like, they're, they're booking smaller venues, but, like, for consecutive nights. So it has me concerned, like, come on, don't wear yourself out. Just book the big venue. Because usually here, you book Cowboy Stadium. That's the biggest one. That's what Beyonce mm-hmm. do. Usher could do that instead of booking for Dallas three nights at American Airlines Center where the Mavericks play. So mm-hmm. I booked that on the first night that was open. The row in front of me was VIP. The row behind me is VIP, but not my row. So I found that out, tried to get them to switch it out. They wouldn't switch it out. So then finally he added another date. And when he added another date the day before, I was able to get VIP on the floor, dead center middle for $10 more. Mm. so i'm like how are y'all doing this and then they keep adding dates so it's like i don't feel like they organizing this the way that it should be it's something weird going on yeah i'm wondering what that is and now you got me thinking could it be about i don't know maybe insurance or something some technical stuff maybe something's booked up what does new wife do what is She's the VP of some record company but he said that this is the first uh, Connor Home is the first album that he's released as an independent. So I think he probably got a new management team that's also managing this tour mm-hmm. and they're not managing it the right way. Like, why would you put him? Why the fuck are you doing four consecutive nights in Atlanta, three consecutive nights? Like, everywhere is two and three nights. I want and y'all to start, know, huh? This is how I want y'all to know that I don't hate men. Cause you know the the same thing that I think about Sydney and Monique and and Mary J Blige and Ken do I'm starting to think about Usher and all these women that he get with that's involved in business. Because now you telling me she involved in the record company yeah, and now is. his tour shit ain't ain't right and she kissing on him and shit in his in his huggy bear fur. Yeah, now, this is his wife, y'all. That Usher got married to on the night of Super Bowl. And I hate that I don't even know her name. Um, Jennifer. Jennifer. Go, go at you. Okay, yeah, this is she. I <laughs> thought she was like in marketing or something. I'm gonna I, look her up. No, I thought that she was too initially because I remember seeing that she like take pictures or something like that. But then I looked it up last week and they said that she was the VP of some, yeah, senior vice president of AR. That's her job. Oh, well, maybe she doesn't work for his company. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know who he signed to, but they're saying she's the senior vice president of AR at Epic Records. So I wonder if I mean I don't know who Usher is signed to. Hmm. Huh. I don't know who, who he signed to. Um, I don't know. It looks like he maybe signed to RCA. Um, so yeah, that might be why, because she doesn't necessarily 
Yeah, he signed the RCA. She doesn't work for his label. She could get him tips, but you know, she's not, she doesn't run any of his stuff. Okay, good. We just want to make sure because whenever I yeah. see shit like that, I just be like, hey, what's going on over here? Yeah. yeah. So they got married. I'm like, okay, Usher. Usher was really hyped up. He was super happy. They decided to go ahead and, you know, do the damn thing. Okay. Wasn't yeah, expecting that. Pretty, um, pretty wedding pictures. Yeah, they are. I think what I like the most about it is that they did it their way. And I see quite a few people that got like tons of money that may go that route, you know, where they may just go to the courthouse or whatever. They may not have this grand old spend all this money on weddings and stuff. Yeah, so, your third like, oh, wife. I mean, I don't see why you would. Nice. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. If it's your third wife, I don't see why you would. Um, just go to the courthouse. <laughs> Yeah, especially yeah, if it's yeah. just an arrangement, like a lot of people like to say mm. on TikTok. But yeah. there were pretty wedding pictures, though. I really hope that this is like. I mean, he seems to be happy. He talked to her about about her interviews. So I hope that this is like this. It right here. He talked about Chili in the interview too. Said he was heartbroken when she uh turned down his proposal. So I mean, he I'm always has a thing for older women. I'm glad you brought that up because he said even though he hurt her. He was so heartbroken that she denied his proposal. And I'm just like, well, what did you do to her? Because y'all swear that he didn't cheat. So what did he do? Mm. Because it kind of made me, I don't know. Like that was just like a red flag to me that you want to act all heartbroken after you didn't hurt somebody and they decide it's not the best thing for them to marry your ass. I'm willing to believe that he did cheat, but didn't give no yeah. baby, get nobody pregnant. I'm willing yeah. to believe that. That's what I was supposed he usher. I was supposed he's cheating. To me, it didn't even that. make sense for him not to cheat. You're but usher. You know what? In the 90s. We really don't hear about Usher messing with other women when he's with somebody high key. I mean, we did have that scandal about the herps or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. But that really got hushed outside up. of <laughs> mm, but I, I don't know about that person though. The person that was saying no, it, I was like, it was multiple people. It was other people. Mm -hmm. uh -uh, it was like I know Yes, it was a dude and two girls, I think. And mm -hmm. then and then the, the, the big girl was the one that, because everybody was mm -hmm. like, oh, she wouldn't fuck a fat girl. They all of a sudden just didn't believe it. Child, but, I don't believe it. We know that. It's okay. Oh, We're gonna let you have this. But it was, it was three people. That's why you I kept saying. You were not alone. You said what? I wasn't alone. You didn't believe me? You it? were not <laughs> alone because I was there with you. Okay, we was on the same page. Though we're far apart, I was with you. We see each other. Nah, I'm gonna just be honest with y'all. I like the nigga music, but like as a person and as an artist, he has always like annoyed me on some level. Really? Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh. Even when he was playing movies, like it is just something about him that seems like he's a smug asshole. No, Usher? I don't yeah. get that. Oh, you don't get the smug? But don't ask me. Was you know, don't ask. Me. I could be wrong, but it's just it's just how he's always come off to me very smug, very like full of himself, and no. not that Usher point, does. You're seems seems describing like a, Chris Brown. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, I feel like I, Usher seems like the complete opposite of that to me. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, we, I just need more proof. You know, um, you're more Are than you, likely right. We just need the proof to come forward to you yeah. know. We need to see it in our face. That nigga has so much glitter on during that the damn concert. Do y'all really need no evidence <laughs> that I'm he likes right. himself? I'm like, <laughs> I just don't think so because when you think about the type, I feel like Usher is very, um, like probably a humble friend, like like somebody who's mm -hmm. friends with a lot of people. And part of the reason why I feel that way is because like his, when it comes to the people who he be with, they be humble looking. Who you know? Now, wait a minute, Nisi. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I just, okay. I don't mean that in a bad way. Okay. I just no, mean I'm like. I'm trying to say where you got that from. That nigga had on a white fur and diamonds and shit the last time I saw him. But the, the ladies be real. Oh. It's kind of like, like in comparison to like, you know, Chris Brown. Oh, I get what you mean. Alleged to like only want to fuck with light skinned girls. Like all the girls look some so type you think of black. He's a nice guy because he's like fucking with thick old bitches. 
I didn't say that, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, <laughs> I didn't say that. I just mean like they look very like homely. regular, and I feel homely? like it's homely. Yeah, yeah, you know that's what, I mean? what he could get. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. That's how I feel. And then like you know, you've seen the clips of him with like Summer Walker and the man, and they seem to be friends. You know, just very casual like he doesn't seem to be too high up to where even the new people he's willing to you know have some type of relationship with so i don't know have mm. you ever seen the faculty yeah okay so how he was on a faculty is how i felt like he was in real life and it's just always it's just it's just you know it's been a minute since i've seen it you know what i'm saying like just squinting a lot just real yeah. like what that's how i have always kind of him. and it was even before the faculty that just kind of solidified he's playing himself remember when he was the dj on she's all that like what was all this shit okay like never mind it's, it's somebody <laughs> brought up a good comment i oh, missed yeah. it somebody said oh he did tell t-pain that y'all remember a couple months ago t-pain came out talking about usher damn near made him cry yeah because uh, he told him that he ain't no real singer or something like that i forgot about that i forgot about that too Oh, I, I think I remember. But T Pain can yeah. sing though. He can. Y'all heard that song he got? He got an inspirational song out right now. Does he? Yes. Go ahead, T Pain. He was singing his ass off. I was like, is this T Pain? And it was T Pain. Oh, well. Oh my. Oh yeah. my God. Yes. I really like um, T you like T Pain? I want T Pain to dabble over into that. Um, we're gonna talk about it, but I'm gonna say. I would like to see him dabble over into oh, that's what he said. He said he killed R&B. That's what he said. Hold up. Usher said that? Yeah, yes, that's what he said. Oh, was not that he Usher being... But low-key, y'all... Uh, no. I don't, no way would I ever agree with that. But I think that that would be crazy as fuck for him to say that, knowing that he jumped over the pop around that time. Oh, 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 my God. Get the fuck out of here with that. The song is called Dreaming by T-Pain, by the way. And it came out February 9th. So it just came out. Okay. Okay. You like it? Out. It's a nice, like he's singing his ass off. Like it's emotional. Like I, I was listening to it by accident, but it's an inspirational song. Mm. Okay. T-Pain wrote Country as a ghostwriter. Oh, that makes sense. It did sound like a song that could like, you know, um shift genres you know what i'm saying like, yeah. not specifically in one but yeah no um i think i think uh i think usher might be a little bit of the mean pretty boy um mm -hmm. and that's fine uh because he's not like he's not brian mcknight there you go because mm -hmm. he's not, he's not brian mcknight yeah that's important oh yeah nah yeah glow has been on repeat since it came out in my house yeah glow Oh, wow. I love Laura. Quick thing. There was a couple that was there at the NFL at the Super Bowl. And I am over them and the <laughs> uh performativeness that they bring to the front. I am fucking tired. Oh, um Taylor and Travis, I just like we don't gotta talk about them long. I just want to say that this relationship is not giving real, it's every bit of fake. And this man, in my opinion, likes melanin. Dark and Taylor no. likes coochie, in my opinion. You think Wait so? Wait a minute, here. I think hmm. she may like be one of those people that like to have sex with men just like to be dominant over a man, but something about her gives closeted lesbian. Like, oh my god, it gives I'm the I'm you saying it gives like aggressive, like I mean, I'm the I'm the nigga, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm the guy. Never heard that before. Oh yeah, you gotta watch the L word to get like the tease. But she, she's absolutely giving I like girls, but I'll never admit it tease. Oh yeah, and her friendship with Black Ivy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Both of them give me, you know, we might kitty click, but we know we can't really be like that for real, for real. So we mm -hmm. pop up with things like this ever so. They be giving me sister of the traveling traveling fans. Black Ivy is one of my <laughs> favorite white girls. I uh, love her too. I love her. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. somebody in the comments got it. They say, "Yeah, she give um she give dominant lesbo vibe." Yes, she absolutely does. Oh, hmm. my. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think that. I don't. 
I don't like seeing them all across my screen. And it's not because like I even prefer Travis with a black girl. I just don't care to see it. They just don't look like they go together to me. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that kept annoying me was seeing Ice Spice and Blake jump all over Taylor every time the Chiefs did something good. good. I see like her little afro was curled, her makeup was it on was point. Cute. I was like, bitch, you better look good every time they put the camera on you as the lone black girl up there. They she was, was acting like cute. Tyler was gonna get a ring at the end of it. I'm Tom. like, why is everybody collectively jumping on Tyler every time the Chiefs do something? I don't think Taylor really wants to get married. I think Taylor may want a ring just to add it to a collection like Elizabeth Taylor or some shit like that. But I don't think she really want a husband. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel like she's right she okay so she gives off that like you know i'm a feminist and i love men and everything but i'm a feminist and i'm you know i'm a business but in real life you don't really want to be married because then you wouldn't be able to like do your thing and be who however you want to be like now she can do whatever she wants to do she can fuck him today and break up with him tomorrow and nobody will blink an eye but I like that about Taylor Swift. Somebody, me too oh, it's gonna happen by the summer they will definitely be broken up she has that Lori harvey contract oh good I can't fully oh, be yeah. mad at it. I just hate that they keep pushing it in our face. Yeah, no. Especially in the NFL. Like, why did we need this in the NFL? For the views and stuff, I guess, to go up. Ain't no telling. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's what it's for. Well, that's a wrap on Taylor. Real quick, I want to talk about one of the biggest things of the night. One of, because a lot of people feel like this person stole Usher Shine. And I would love to get your thoughts on that as Beyonce decided to drop the fact that she is releasing a country album. Two different I'm singles. Because the body was looking at my face. <laughs> what? What happened? This is what you said. Stall Usher Shine. I know Bonnie <laughs> looked at me because I was looking like, how is that possible? <laughs> Uh -huh. Embarrassing. Yeah, no, people was online saying that is so disrespectful of Beyonce. She could have let Usher have his night. How dare you drop your music on that night? What? That's what they say. Oh, so Grow up. Grow up. Okay. At the end of the day, she didn't drop it until a nice little bit of time after his performance, to be clear. Because the commercial happened before his performance, and I went looking for the song because I was like, Beyonce, title, didn't see shit. Came back after his performance, and then it was up there. So she specifically made sure as to not overshadow him, not put it out right before. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't want to hear that shit. I hate. Y'all, I absolutely hate the heart over her coochie. I don't know why, but it's disturbing me so. Um, oh, wow. I, yeah, I don't know why. I'm like, what is going on? Why is that happening? Because like, it why looks it like a pale, uh, no disrespect, but it looks like a pale Caucasian um, young woman when that's not really how Beyonce is shaped. And I'm also annoyed with the wig, like, like, okay, so your mama want to argue about you wanting to look black and all of that. But why are you whitening your image for country? You've been doing it since the premiere for the Renaissance movie. I don't care what nobody's talking about. She's been looking paler. She's been with the blonde hair, lighting. I don't give a fuck what it is, but it's an aesthetic that she's choosing for this specific album. And I just feel like if we want to prove that black people own, you know, country just like anybody else because, you know, black people created it. Why do you have to white woman yourself in mm -mm. order to be a part of the genre? Like you could wear the cowgirl hats and all of that. But why do you have to pull full Patsy Klein? You know what I'm saying? Like the, even though I like the hair, like especially this hair right here in this second photo. Yeah. So she looks just like Solange in that picture. She does look like Solange. But I just still feel like I don't I don't like the fact that we needed to turn a white girl with the, the platinum blonde and a real ashy coloring in pictures and videos and shit. Like she looked like Michael Jackson in that last video when they was, you know, struggling through the crowd. Mm -hmm. Like she looked like Michael Jackson. Like when Michael Jackson used to be like having all kind of shit all over himself, shiny and all of this ponytail glistening out the back. Like just looking real Caucasian. I don't know. But yeah, I... I don't think she really stole Usher's show or anything. I think Usher did his thing and like it will forever be remembered as Usher killing the damn Super Bowl. Like it was concert at the Super Bowl. Nobody yeah, mind about that just because Beyonce came out with two old ass country songs. 
Yeah, I think it's weird. People try to make it seem like she stole the shine because I had the same thought. Um, not the thought that she stole the shine, but the thought that it came out after he had already performed. And I was wondering if that was intentional. Um, and honestly, I would have loved if Beyonce hopped on the stage for love in this club. Oh, yeah, that would And I don't think she would have stole. I mean, it would have been a great moment. She to wanted to chill. She would have. The way she was sitting in her section, it looked like she just wanted to sit there and watch the game. <laughs> you know what? I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said that. Were you were you were you done, DC? I wanted to make sure you finish. Um, what else? Oh, I was gonna talk about her roots. I liked her hair at the Super Bowl. I yeah. think that that blonde eats. That blonde looks good. That volume looks cooked. good. Yes, when she said, don't give us no more flat white girl wigs. We need it to be mm -hmm. cooked, be curled. Okay. Yeah, it looked really good. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that that's a fair uh point and something to think about as we explore yeah. like this country side of um Beyonce. Like, yes, we taking the genre back, but what does that look like? Right. So I think that's fair. I'm excited about it. Me too. Me too. I don't think she stole Usher's moment at all. Two things can can exist at the same time. They both had their yeah. moment, and Usher ain't mad about it. Beyonce right. is good, so that's all that matters. But I'm glad uh, Bondi brought up the fact that she's just trying to enjoy the game because yeah. she also was just trying to enjoy her nephew's um, <clears throat> fashion show child. And the people was just not uh, about to let Beyonce have it. So I definitely want to go ahead and show y'all exactly how these folk were acting and how that's Mama Tina was. was giving it to them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Criminal offensive side eye. All right, so y'all see how Mama Tina was looking at the people. I know Beyonce is tired. She mm. tries to be as nice as she can, but she didn't get a break at the Grammys because all the celebrities was running up to her. Now she can't get a break at the damn fashion show. It, and and again, I, I believe it could have been like a, a well, I don't know if it was for college students or not. I'm not sure if the, if uh, her nephew is in school or not. But did y'all see how the people had the phones in her face, had the light damn near blinding the lady? Mama Tina yeah, was pissed. Yeah, they was doing ways. But I'm going to say this. If you didn't want to be fucking noticed, why did you come in there looking like a goddamn disco ball? Like she has on the like, no, everybody else around her is dressed in dark colors. And she Ooh, comes in there point. in light gray with glitter all up and around her throat area. She looked like she's about to perform. I feel like this is one of the moments where, yes, this is annoying for the family that this is the attention that Beyonce gets. But if Beyonce didn't want this attention, I feel like she would have dressed differently. Oh, well, there mm. it is. That's a great point. What kind of fashion show is this? Is what I'm wondering. Like, I, I heard of the brand before, but I'm wondering if maybe she thought the people was gonna have a little bit more cool. Uh, like, oh, that's a good. I don't know. Man, we could have had. She still could have worn it all black though, because I even saw her oh. nephew walking down the aisle in black. Yeah, I feel like that could have been the thing, man. She just didn't want to be on theme. Like, where's huh. Solange? Did anybody see Solange? Solange was there. <laughs> she, she had on there. all black. Yep. She was oh, there. so that's, that's why we didn't see her, because she had on colors. <laughs> 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 Blended her in with everybody else. I like, also think she, was, she wasn't she was sitting right next to them, is what I wanted to believe. Um, so I, I don't like, think she was. Been probably but they said she was on the front row. Yeah, she could have oh. been on a different end or something. But, yeah, no, it's all stage. No, I absolutely feel like Mama is annoyed because y'all, you know, flashing in her fucking eyes and she got her sunglasses. Beyonce knew what she was doing because she has her sunglasses on. Y'all are in a fashion show. I'm sure it's not that well lit. You got on sunglasses because you was prepared for what was about to happen. It's the same thing as, as Julia's having to push people through that little bitty area. Bitch, you Beyonce. Y'all should have a y'all should have like like mini security. 
not just one. Like y'all should have at least four niggas walking on each side of her front and back at all times when you know you're gonna be out in public looking like a damn disco ball. Yeah, they should have had somebody strong arming them people. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't in the a, front and on the sides. Like they had one dude in front of her that was you know trying to block the cameras, and Julius is sitting behind her. So yeah, yeah it, it yeah, it was it was just giving. And so Solange was next to her mother. So we didn't even see a goddamn picture of Solange. She was sitting right there. Yeah, Beyonce should have wore black. <laughs> Shit. Well. Mm -mm. Okay. <clears throat> Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. She look cute though. Yeah, I will give her that. She definitely look cute. All right, y'all. Let's see what else we got over here for the people. Okay. Um, we're gonna get into kind of like a little bit of TV talk. So let's go ahead and do that. Portia Williams coming back to Real Housewives of Atlanta? That's false. But Portia Gravadia is in the building. <laughs> See y'all. And there you have it. Miss Portia Williams is returning to Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I got to know how y'all feel about that. Um, I'm not as excited as a lot of people are. Like, ah, oh, Portia's coming back. Yes. Say the franchise, girl. Um... I want Portia to keep it real about that, that um about that marriage because when she did Portia Family uh, Matters, it seemed like she was doing more deflecting and trying to make it about yes. her family and less yes. about that marriage. And I do feel like they're gonna bring her back and let her kind of play in our face a little bit. And yes. we're gonna tone in and see. I don't see Kenya really holding her accountable. I feel like they're gonna try to be cool, yeah. <clears throat> but I think they can't be cool because I don't think Kenya can go a long time with Portia playing in her face. So <laughs> they're gonna have some issues. I feel. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I'm not excited about Portia coming back at all. People were sending it to me, and I was like, wrong road. She could have just stayed on um, for me. Honestly, I was a Portia fan when she was on the show, mm -hmm. but as soon as Portia showed her ass on Portia's Family Mess, and then soon after that, I felt like she, I, I didn't even finish Real Housewives Ultimate Girl Trip, but I felt like she had begun to show her ass on there, coupled mm -hmm. with Giselle, coupled with the girls from Salt Lake City kissing her ass. It was kind of giving me the dynamics of what it would be like if she came back to Real Housewives of Atlanta with new girls, feeling like they got to bow down to Portia because she's a, you know, Bye. a long time Atlanta fave. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, she was even like, she had said some comment in the first episode when they assigned her a room on Ultimate Girl Trip. And she was like, they gave her the nicest room. They gave her the nicest room. And she was like, look at what y'all trying to do. Look, y'all trying to do this for me. Y'all like basically playing in their face like, oh, y'all must really want me back. And I feel like she going to come on the show with that type of behavior. I feel like mm -hmm. she going to end up producing. Um, I feel like she going to be low key I feel like I'm going to not stand her as much as I can't stand Giselle mm. but we shall see we really should and I really hope that Kenya don't you know they try to create this fake freaking frat because I've seen them in each other's comments um, recently and I think it's like oh okay nobody's here to be the buffer for us we ain't got candy we don't know who else we got. We might just be the only two OGs. So let's go ahead and, you know, play nice over Instagram. So when these cameras come, we can act like we're not new to this. They're going to use the daughters again. Yes. They're going to use the daughters again. So I'm not here for Portia. I'm not either. Um, I'm not excited about it at all, girl, at all. Um, and it's because for one, I feel like you're going to you're gonna continue to fake the funk with that relationship because no relationship is perfect and y'all be over there faking and fucking front even that little, <laughs> but Portia Guabadia, girl, give us a motherfucking break. Williams, Guabadia, it doesn't even matter. It's the same bitch and you're going to come on the show and give everybody your ass to kiss like baby Nene because you think that's the position that you hold because these people that made you feel so valuable because they was able to give you Candy's check. So I hope you 
work for it. I'll say that. I hope you work for it. But something makes me feel like you're going to have a lot of, I'm not going to give her a moment. She wants a moment. Like mm -hmm. she's going to be doing that all season. So walking yeah. Walking out of scenes. Yep. Walking exactly. out of scenes. And you know, I feel like you're right because in addition to everything you said, Portia is actually coming back as an actual housewife. So you really ain't going to be able to tell her SHI. No matter who the man is, she's coming Trust back as that. Me. And then they gave her that deal with the, the scripted deal. So to know that she Bravo got gave all of that. Deal. Yeah, I believe it was no NBC wow. Universal. NBC oh, Universal okay. gave her that. So I guess she can put content on Peacock or Bravo or anything I guess they may own. Um, so yeah. I'm trying to figure out what I don't do shit Portia is going to do though. Like all you do is get on reality shows. You don't do shit. You can't even dress now that you don't work with Jamie anymore. So mm -hmm. I don't know what exactly you're going to do that's going to be interesting for scripted TV. You can't act. You can't sing. Like, no disrespect, but Portia lives in La La Land. So I'm just kind of wondering. You just <laughs> said all that and said no disrespect. I know she did. She went in. She <laughs> chewed this lady up drink. and then going to say no disrespect. Because it's not to be disrespectful. It's just to be honest. Like, she lays she do shit. But get on reality shows. Like, and to me, there's a level of I just got to show up and do a job. I know what the job is. I show up and do the job. There's no real creativity to the situation. So, so that's you don't why think, I'm wondering what type of scripted shit do you think you're going to come up with? It's going to be something that Simon going to come up with. It's going to be Simon's idea. And you made that. I so don't think that she going to hide. Somebody in the comments said she going to hide her husband. Y'all, let's be for real. Simon wants to be seen. Simon is going to be on Especially he camera. lost the weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Simon is going to want to be seen. I guarantee well, he won't be fake Todd. He won't be fake Todd. Now they're going to copy and paste Candy and Todd's motto after they didn't. Girl. So y'all didn't like Flatline? I did. I like Flatline. Bondi said that lady can't sing. You don't like Flatline? She really can't sing, but What's I did that? like Flatline. That was her song. I think then Candy write that song or help or something. Yes, maybe not, yes. but Portia, Portia struggles through songs. Yes, do I feel like she can actually sing? No, she's it's still flat line on the vocals. The, the, the vocals are weak, they're yeah. shaking, and it's not because of vibrato. Okay, when her and Shamia went and sang the Star Spangled Banner, bitch, I was on the floor. I said, Shamia don't really like you. It's given, she knew you was going to sound bad. She knew you was going to embarrass yourself because she practiced with you and she still let you do it anyway. I thought and she you was a bit better. All friends. Huh? I thought she was a bit better. You know, everybody can sing the national anthem. Can they? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. And I was help. Yeah, no, no you can't. Me. Yeah, you're right. That's why everybody did that they part. Sing Amazing Grace. That's why they always want to choose. And I'm singing Amazing Grace. I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, can't. when you harmonize, most people can harmonize even if you can't sing, right? No. People can't no, hear it. They, 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 hell, I ain't got no vocal experience. They can't hear it. They can't hear the ah. Uh, they can't hear it. Mm -hmm. And Barry is sing. I can't wait to see where her reads are, though, because I know she got her note cards ready for when somebody say something about their husband. I'm just looking for her in her ass, because I know that's what she's going to bring to the table most of all is a tight dress in her ass. That'd be a little good, though. I'm sorry. Like, Portia, you might get on my nerves a bit, girl. But I was like, Portia look good. She does. It's the ass. I mean, the pictures have been looking good. Listen, I, I'm I'm the lesbian that that uh, Portia would have been able to have her little one night stand with that wouldn't have said nothing, you know. Not like Candy got to tell everybody that you kissed her. And stuff. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. I'd have kept it to myself, bitch. I cannot. Okay, so as we speak on Real Housewives, all right, y'all do know that Miss um, Phaedra Parks is also in discussion to. Oh come back to the show as well and i've been seeing people talking about oh we about to possibly get freaking frack back mm -hmm. um <clears throat> i will say this <sighs> if they bring phaedra back i, I wouldn't mind i mean if y'all sit marlo down and bring phaedra we're not going to trip we know that she's over there on married to medicine let's be honest it doesn't make sense for her to be on married to medicine it, it makes does. sense for housewives especially if you're gonna bring apollo over there so we can get into some things um <laughs> I'm here I, for that. 
I'm not simply because she has been ganking the mm-hmm. piss out of us since she left Real Housewives of Atlanta. Every time she pops up on a reality show, she gives you nothing real. And all she does is do a funny little cute one liner, which is why yes. if she's a friend of the show, it works. But if yes. she actually comes on the show, she's not going to give us her life that much. How many cute little scenes are you going to be able to have with your sons, girl? Come on. You know what I'm saying? And on Traders, it's good. A different type of show. But actually having to show her life and be vulnerable in a way where she's not being praised, I don't think that's something that Phaedra can do. Um, And she hasn't been able to do that since the Apollo situation. So I just kind of feel like at this point, we no longer need people that are on reality shows for back in the day before they figured out the formula. No, we need... Nostalgic ass shit. Mm -hmm. No, we don't need that. We need people that's actually... Don't know what the fuck going on and just want to be here. Like, yep. yeah, not in the con- not in control of what they're able to kind of show. Exactly. Yeah, you know, it's like they Literally. they're the ones that's the producers. Um, and I would be I would feel away as a producer to be honest. Um, if their check is bigger than mine and they over there being able to move how they want to move, and I'm over mm-hmm. here trying to do my job and I'm not getting paid half as much. Low which key, I, I think that's for. why. I think that's why Salt Lake City has been uh, good this last season because you got a lot of new people on there. Well, I know they're not new. This is their third season, but the women are not like seasoned reality TV vets. Like mm-hmm. they come on the TV shows and things just kind of happen. And they're white women. That's another thing. White women don't have shame. They don't have the shame that black women have when it comes to these reality shows. Think That's about why it. Mary can't stand that. <laughs> exactly. Black women feel like they got to be like a representation of their people. So they can't just come on here and act the ass. You know, mm-hmm. they can't just respond. They have to look a certain way. White people feel like, bitch, as long as I got money, ain't really shit you could tell me. I'm white and rich. I see that. So yes. they, can, they can have all of these because they have the hugest fucking scandals on the show. Like, we accuse each other of crazy shit. Like, M- Meredith accused Jen, I mean, Jen's friend, what's the uh, the, 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 the girl, the Grecian girl, whose name escapes me already? The new girl? The sister Monica? Monica? No, not that one. The the new one, who was uh, Angie, Angie. Angie K. She said Angie K threatened to kill her family. Like, I was like, she threatened to kill your family? Like, what? She said she threatened to kill me and my family. She read the list of shit off that Angie K has said to her. Angie that was saying at the reunion? Yes. You know they think they were saying that Angie K is in the Greek mafia. And and the way Angie K responded, I was like, bitch, that's a political response. (laughs) What'd she say? It was like, I have a reputable business. I'm I'm very influential in my community. (laughs) Like, I'm not a of any kind of criminal organization i run a great business you know i'm good in my community like as soon as you start talking about your business and how good you are in the community i instantly feel like yeah that's some truth to that shit. yeah yeah right 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 you gotta dispute yeah. you gotta lower her credibility yes so. like she Monica. gotta give shit to the kids during you know the holidays she give away turkeys yeah. like the drug dealers she did she went that far to deflect Nah, she ain't go that far. Oh, I was going to say, why? No, she went on like a, she went on for a while. I'm being Mm -hmm. funny, but she went on a nice little way talking about everything she's done, her business and how this is, you know, really tried to tear her down and all of that type of shit. Um, but no, it's, it's absolutely giving mob wives on some slick shit. Like, Mm. I can see her doing that. Yeah. This is why I don't want Phaedra back. Um, Okay. We don't need we don't need the nostalgia. I feel like if y'all are gonna do a recast, don't try to have half the girls be from previous, you know, from oh, this is where we were at the peak. You can't you just can't recreate shit like okay. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I feel like they only got like to be honest, I feel like they had one more shot to get this right. Mm. And if they fuck up with the casting this season and it's bad again, mm-hmm. I don't see them recovering to the point to where we like you know, two years later, everybody's like, okay, let's just see all new girls. You got one shot to get this right. And Phaedra is not, not it. Hopefully they bring on some like real rich, rich. Like, I don't want to see Portia is the only one that's rich by way of her husband or whatever. Really I want to see some rich. other like boss up and educated. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, my yeah. husband, doctor, I'm a doctor. So what? Candy's at one of her friends is talking to them. Which Did one? 
She didn't say her friend's name because she didn't want to get her in trouble. But she talked about it on Speak on it. So I wonder if it was Gail. Gail. I'm the lady from TikTok that's been exposing her husband for Chi. Yeah, I saw that. Huh. Well, yeah, Candy been talking to one of her friends. I'm going to tell you one thing. I do not want to see that white lady. I don't want to see her either. Keep her where she at. Come on, she filmed. Oh, hell no. You know, I might as well throw the whole show away. I'm I, I'm gonna tell you, I might not watch the episodes well, that she's if she's on the show. The only reason I said is you don't get to talk about these black women the way you did, talking about you the only one dumb enough to sit on the stage with them, and then you're gonna come back to them because you need a check because you didn't gamble right. all of you and your fucking husband's money away with your trailer park ass. No, right. she needs to go get on one of them white shows. She needs to go yes. and find her people. She don't need to come back to the black people and get a checkup off for of us just because this is where she used to be. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Get her back on her own show. Mm-hmm. No. Tardy for the bills. Okay. Not tardy for the party. Because mm-hmm. y'all should have had the fucking show while all this shit was going on. Oh, a lot of people mm-hmm. are saying it's Ming Lee. Y'all know who that is? I know who she is. Yeah, I know who she is. She do hair. I think she used to date Rick Ross at one point. She was I don't real know cool if I'm going to like that Karen's dynamic. Couple. The only reason why is because I know that she real cool with both Portia and Kenya. And if that's going to be one team versus another team, I'm I'm not here for it already. Mm. We're going to see. That's interesting. No, we, yeah, we will see. Oh. All right, y'all. So anything else on the ladies of Housewives? Oh, I did have one quick question. Who do y'all think has the better comeback with Bravo? Sheree, because she keeps returning to the same show? Or Phaedra because she's returned to one fr- franchise and might be able to hop back over to her same one. Sheree, period. Mm. Would y'all like Sheree. to see her again? I don't want to see Sheree no more. No, we don't want to see her again, but it was better than Phaedra's comeback at the market. Because it related with the cast. And she made herself like she made herself like the, you know. The star of the show, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though it wasn't even really about her, but she still made it about her. Mm-hmm. And that is a better comeback than Phaedra. Phaedra ain't been able to make shit about her over there. Oh my um, God. And then on top of that, um, I just wanted to see her house. So there's that. I think the thing with Phaedra, the thing that's scary about Phaedra and not good for reality TV to me mm-hmm. Is we never saw her even acknowledge the shit that she did to Candy. Like on the reunion, she's so f- like she's so much disassociated from what she did with what was going on and sat there mm-hmm. and looked at everybody like they was crazy. And I just feel like you can't really work with nobody who's not gonna give you anything. Like at least Sheree will sit out outside of a cafe waiting for a man that's never gonna show up, you know? Like that will give us TV. Phaedra. Phaedra won't do that. So I think the better comeback is Sheree because she's going to You are so it. right. You are so right because now I'm thinking about, remember how when everything was being exposed, how Phaedra sat up there, didn't know what to say, went over there to apologize to Portia or whatever. Thing. She kind of did the same thing on Married to Medicine when they were sitting in the room getting ready to tell Quad she got to go. And yes. then when she was sitting at the table and Heavenly and Quad was going back and forth, yeah, she makes this face. Uh, well, I was just, you know, like, I'm like, Phaedra, girl. That's why they made her a traitor. Too. That's why they made her a traitor on Traitors. Mm-hmm. She was the first the traitor that they nominated. And that's because they know how she moved. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think good at it. Yes, she's see. the best fucking traitor on the show. I got to watch mm-hmm. it. How many episodes in? Oh, I think mm-hmm. like... I don't know. I just started watching. I have to binge it. It might be like six. I think. I, I think I've watched all of them at this point. I don't even know what it's about, so I might have to check it, that out. It be like a murder mystery type of thing where you have to get who the traitor is. Like somebody gets murdered, and you have to figure out, you know, who murdered them. Like it, it's a like little that thing New York was on when she read the dog fuck out that other person. Um, <laughs> House of Villains. Yes, kind of yeah. like that. Okay, it's kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. But they be wrong all the time. They always like this person is a traitor, and they be dead ass wrong. It's like only three traitors, and and traitor in charge. Last episode, they tried to call her out, and she ate that motherfucker up. Okay, when I tell you, I need to watch it. By the time she was like, "How does that make any sense?" And then, like, you didn't really have to say anything because the dude finished running it about you know how he you know she 
uh, you know, says something to the people, as soon as they uh they're about to get kicked off the show, she'll go and try to like woo 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 them as if that meant something. But it almost kind of seemed like he was trying to say, it seems like you know who's gonna get kicked off before they get kicked off, but mm. he didn't really have any evidence to prove it. So she was able to back him <laughs> down. Oh, like, you talking about Peter. Peter from The Bachelor? The one yeah. where she said that I, I'm not okay, okay, okay. That's why I started watching the show because I'm trying to get to that point. But it just don't feel like a show to me that I can binge. I watched mm-hmm. the first two episodes. Now I just want to skip to the last one, yeah. like the like the latest one. Oh, child! Yeah, honest, she, you know? yeah, she bore his ass out on that last episode, boy. Um, it was hilarious because she really got to grandstand and have this superior attitude. She absolutely, <laughs> it was hilarious. And then Sheree went up for her. Sheree basically was Portia. Sheree you know on there how, too? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Barely Blind doing loyalty. anything. Blind yeah. loyalty, just there being pulled by the other housewives that are there. Yes. Sheree went up for her. Like, I don't think y'all should, you know, say that about Phaedra just because the show we was on. Whole time Sheree don't know she a traitor. And, and Phaedra sitting there and it reminded me of when she sat on that stage with Portia acting like she didn't know a fucking thing. And that's why they made her a traitor. Like, that says so much about Phaedra and who she is. So, mm-hmm. thank it you for the super chat. chat. I was trying to remember, but I don't be remembering none of these people's names. I, he was on Survivor and he was on Survivor like three or four times. Or some CT? Shit like now, CT was on the challenge. Yeah, no. Oh, child, okay. Was, I thought I saw his name circulating, circulating. Is he he's on, on the, the show? show too? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, yeah, he has to be a traitor. But no. No, he's not. It's Phaedra, the Dan dude, and it's this other white girl whose name I forgot already. Because her Parvati name is, or something oh, like I'm that. Like, just Parvati. Parvati. Yes, Dan and Pavardi. And and Dan just went home. Jan, yeah, to check this Dan out. from Big Brother. That's what I thought. Mm-mm. Who how how y'all feel about New York joining the cast? No, no thank oh, you. She's way too over the top the animated. Yeah, we need regular people. I did say I felt like Tay might be good on there. I think so too. Especially because she's on Real Housewives. Yeah, because she'll be. She's no. not gonna do it, especially not at uh, not at Bryce and Family Values is coming back. But I thought she would be good because she had, especially when Candy was still gonna be there, and also in doses. Like we used to get Tamar way too much. Like I feel like on Real Housewives, we will only get her in doses. Mostly getting her in moments with other people where she'll get into conflict. And Tamar so crazy. Her conflict is genuine, even though it's stupid. It's genuine conflict because she's crazy. So, do like, you think, do you think this show could potentially grow her? No, I think if Iyanla and her sisters and her mama couldn't grow her, then I don't think that's gonna happen with a group of strangers who she sees as a check. I think she'll come in and play the victim and play her role, and she'll pop back when she needs to pop back in all this extra shit because she know ain't nobody gonna hit her. Um, but I feel like Tamar would get into it with people consistently mm-hmm. and it wouldn't be fake. Like when Marlo gets into it with people and you know it's just because she wants to have a moment so she can solidify herself on the show. Tamar would just like honestly be having these nutcase moments. Girl, y'all so messy for these. I'm talking about something. JR would be a messy housewife. Child, would. He would. He would come ready to film. Okay, come on, Peter Jr. <laughs> okay, yeah. Peter dipped in white chocolate. Thank you. I hope they, uh, no shade, but I hope that they get some women on the show with husbands that are ready to film because I think that's what makes the magic of Married to Medicine sometimes. Mm. And for all we know right now, all we got is Simon. That's true. And he ain't going to yeah. really the buck anyway. You know how he like to just sit there and not say nothing. Just walk yeah. around. I think, he'll, I think he'll get into, I think he wants to be seen. And I think that he will. I think he want to be seen, but not in that way, mm-hmm. especially after her show. I think he knows how he can look bad on a reality show. So I don't think he wants to be seen too much. I want. I think he wants to float in. Oh, I love you. I'm a good husband. And then float out. I don't think that he's the type of person that has the mental awareness of him looking bad. You don't think so? No. Not mm-hmm. with Portia? No. Mm-hmm. Portia not going to let that happen. He's done how many hours of therapy that he thought was good enough? No, I don't see that. Hollering. 
But he will turn the comments off on his Instagram when he know everybody going to be tearing that ass up. Yikes. Help us through it. Um, anything else on Real Housewives? No. Okay, great. I uh, have a TikTok video that I wanted to run by you guys. And it's about dating a broke man versus an uneducated man, I guess you could say. Let's get into it. I'm so sick of people getting bad advice. And one of the worst pieces of advice that I hear all the time is don't date a broke man. Wrong. Wrong. It's not don't date a broke man. Don't date an uneducated man. For when he is intellectually inferior, he will assert his dominance in other arenas. Let me say that again, because I need to jot that down. When he is intellectually inferior, he will assert his dominance in other arenas. When he can't match your intellect, when he can't match you in conversation, when he can't really debate you, when he can't really offer much to a talk, he will assert his dominance in other arenas. His strength will show up in other places. And those places will it be emotional or physical abuse or both. Am I lying? You need an educated man, for an educated man will know how to escape poverty. An educated man has an understanding of patriarchal system. An educated man understands feminism. And an educated man understands how to learn. When you deal with an uneducated man, you're dealing with a man who never had to be a student. You can't teach somebody who has never learned how to be taught. So he ain't gonna give you no different, but broke. That's the only thing he could do different for you. But an educated man will get it. Especially for women, y'all are getting degrees at higher rates, which means you're escaping poverty at higher rates, which means you're making more money and it means you're intellectually superior. So if he's not beating you intellectually and financially, where else can he beat you at? Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's giving trans man to me, but uh, I'm going to let it go. Oh, uh, my. <laughs> No, because everybody's saying, oh, you know, he looked young. And I'm like, he also looked like he may have been born a she. I'm not sure. Oh, that's that's not with true. him. And again, that's a soft, that's a soft face mustache now. Um, but let me say this. I agree. I agree. And I say this because I think that's where I have a disconnect with a with the city girls. Okay. A lot of y'all have unrealistic expectations of how much money men are supposed to have, especially black men in this society. It's not, you know, like y'all ignore environmental factors, y'all ignore all of, you know, just the, the things that are occurring in order for black men and black women, period, to not be on a certain tax bracket and be make, making a certain amount of money at large. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of ignorance going on there. And so I find that a lot of the young women will ignore men who do have education, but, they, but may not be on a money yet. You'll ignore him for somebody who has money, but no education. And you'll end up in a worse situation versus a dude who, if y'all are in y'all twenties, he went to school, he working his way up. He just ain't there yet. That's somebody that you could work with. That's going to eventually get on. That's not just, um, potential. That's somebody that's working towards something mm -hmm. versus the attitude that a lot of the young women have now, which is that if he doesn't come with it, then I ain't got time for it. And, and, you know, in fact, you make your relationships transactional, so I feel like, you know, it's a lot of factors to think about, but I do agree that the education is what really matters at the end of the day, because, you know, when me and my husband first got together, like I was the breadwinner now, not so much because I own my own business, but outside of that, he makes above the national average for a black man, like mm -hmm. above the national average for a black man and educated, college educated, like mm -hmm. all of those like he didn't have money when we were in our 20s but he was college educated that mattered mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i'm saying he knew how to talk to me he, he wasn't abusive in any way that i could recognize especially coming from an abusive household i had sensitivities for shit like that so other things mattered more to me than money and i do feel like in the long run that was good for me may not be like that for people that be with men and they don't have any drive you know what i'm right. saying that's another component but, you know, I, I can't tell the young girls what to do out here, but I would like for y'all to get somebody at least in your education range. Because some of y'all be out here in relationships with niggas who you know are so dumb, you should not be with them. Like, you know they dumb. Yeah. They don't know how to spell shit. They don't know how to talk. I seen a video of the dude who was like, 
uh, uh, it was a word or something like that, like a, a big word that the girl had said. And he was like, who is this? Who is this? I can't remember what the word was, but he was like, who is that? Who is that? And it's like, nigga, that's a word. That's not a person. What's wrong with you? Like, <sighs> Yeah. Very saying. It's sad. Um, for me, uh, I spent 75% of the video not really being able to listen because who is walking down the street with this much fire in their chest besides somebody who we should also be cautious of, which is someone who will use female issues for clout. So I was kind of like, okay, here we go with this shit. And I also couldn't listen to it 100% of the way because more often than not, an uneducated man is a broke man. So I was not really saying shit. Unless he's a I was like, he or... eloquently explained the same thing in a sense. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's what it sounded like to me. But he wasn't wrong, shit. but he was just explaining in a better fashion the same thing. I agree. Yeah, and then, I mean, he ultimately ended up saying that towards the end. He was saying somebody who's not as smart as you will, um, something about they won't understand this, they won't understand that. And I was thinking to myself, well, if that's the case, then how can they do that on somebody's job? So I don't I don't think he was really saying shit. I mean, don't date an un- uneducated man, don't date a broke man, period. Like, I don't know. It was just that to me, the cloud-based <laughs> man. Mm-hmm. Who's posting talking about feminine issues? That's more of I wouldn't say more. That's that's the equal red flag for me. Where I'm like, get the fuck off our internet trying to fire up the, the female population. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess the idea that women because I often wonder who are these women? Like I know they're out there, like I know they're like sexy red girls out there that you know, or if you ain't making this amount of money and they ain't never seen that amount of money before, they don't know what the fuck that looked like. They just seen it on the internet and now they repeating it. I know there must be girls out there like that, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of the men that say these things are like our age range. They're between 30 and 40 years old saying this shit. And it makes me wonder, do you know any women between the ages of 30 and 40? Because most of the women in that age range that I know fucking work. And not only do they work, they went to college. They have some form of trade, education. They make their money. They pay their bills. Like, you know, like, I don't know any women that are, like, really out here solely looking for some dude to pay for a meal at an expensive restaurant for them. So I just be wondering, like, am I missing it? Like, am I missing this huge population? Because <laughs> it don't seem, you know. Mm. Anything to keep the people going. Anything. Not anything. Oh. It is. Like, what can I do to rev people up? Let me walk down the busy streets of New York and stand on this today or wherever he was at. It was just like, come on. I think people just need to make sure they read the room as in the person that you're with as much as possible. I mean, some people go hide themselves, you know, for a while before you really find out who they are because you could get with a person that ain't broke and they still going to do the same shit that this man display and we're gonna get into that in um just a second um but make sure that you guys are coming in you are indeed liking up the video okay and um speaking of which as we talk about um people being broke people having money and um them displaying certain behavior i want to get into this situation real quick (sighs) the young man you see in the middle his name is Bori. And he happens to be, I believe, a rapper or something like that, uh, likely signed to Meek Mill. So Valentine's Day was yesterday or whatever, whenever. And instead of it being a post saying, happy birthday, baby, I'm sorry, happy Valentine's Day, baby, daddy, it was giving, I'm about to expose you and let the people see exactly how it is that you treat me. Okay, so I want y'all to check uh, this out real quick. Remove your camera from that. Move your phone from that camera. Jenny, I would literally get you killed. For real. In real life. Get out of this phone. Remove. Oh, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Okay. I'm not, I'm not doing it, nigga. Nah, you don't worry. I, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Oh, I'm not doing it. 
All right. I apologize for not giving you guys that trigger warning before um, playing that uh, clip because it definitely was um, a bit triggering for me, especially seeing her sit on the ta- sit on the uh, sofa and he's talking to her like she's a fucking kid. Um, I hate that for her. And this is a person that's signed. That's a rapper that allegedly has money and is not a broke one. You know what I'm saying? But this is what he said once that video came out. Um, they said, admitted to my mom of sleeping with three men in the same month my son was conceived. And that's why I always had double. I always had doubt he was uh, mine. Uh, the rapper reportedly wrote um, that it's been lies from the jump. And uh, to make things worse, more than half of these men she slept with unprotected, which makes it even more nastier. But she gets on social media, SHI. Like she's so holy and close to God and such a great person. I've been allowing my name to get tarnished for far too long. Um, sir, um, you did that to yourself for your name to be tarnished. You did that to your damn self. And what's killing me softly is how y'all be getting with these ladies. At some point, you learn their history. And then and that goes for women too. Y'all stay in these relationships and then be trying to drag them after the fact, especially after you and Sadapin got exposed, sir. So I just want to get you guys the thoughts on um, this sir situation, you know, especially after hearing what this young man said about don't date a broke man. I think this man is a bitch. Um, I think that he took just based on his response. Let me focus on her being a hoe. So y'all will justify the language that I used with her in the threats that I made against her. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if this man has money just because he signed, but yeah, to tie it back to the video we just talked about, it's other things that people should also look for when it comes to red flags. And I hope that she end up leaving. This man said, I will get you killed in real life. Yep. Yeah. He's a whole bitch. There's something wrong with him for real. And- Meek Mill came out and said that this man is not a dream chaser. He said he's going to disassociate himself from him. Every time the guy gets robbed in Atlanta, he gives him a call. So Meek Mill doesn't want to have anything to do with him. But a few people was like, but Meek Mill, hold on. Let me grab you by your collar because didn't Nikki say that you assaulted her? And I'm like, this is messy here. Mm -hmm. Based on the way Nikki moves, should we believe anything she says about being hurt by a man? I think two things could be true. I mean, you know, in real life, I would agree with that, Jamie. <laughs> you always trying to throw somebody a bone, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, she tried, but God damn it, I've had it up to here. Okay, I've had it up to here, God damn it. And if we gonna defend Tory Lanez, bitch, then I don't know anything about what you're talking about as it pertains to Meek Mills and his tight pants. Mm. I don't know anything about it. I know he went and gave Remy a whole song of shit to write about you. That was funny. Um, you know, I guess you didn't hurt when that happened to you. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, releasing footage on niggas is, is the best thing to do, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, because they they thrive in the darkness. And I do, and I often say this, y'all, because I feel like, you know, I live this life. Um, there is something to be said for even the educated man with money. Like, nothing (laughs) like at the end of the day like my daddy was educated and had money and there was still moments just like that in my household not when somebody's being threatened to be killed but when somebody's standing over you screaming at the top of their lungs and you're scared Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're scared because they will haul off and fucking hit you you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so i i've never been one that has ever felt like a woman wanting to be taken care of. I have never felt like that was a safe space to be in because I've seen how those situations work out in the long run. And and I think that when people say uh, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. They only think about dictators. They only think about presidents. They only, you know what I mean? They don't think about the man who y'all say runs the household who is given all of the power over everybody in the house and how that can be corrupted when he is dealing with environmental factors and all of these outside stressors and doesn't know how to deal with those emotions 
Who's yeah. he going to let out his frustrations on? The people that he feels safest to do it with. And that's usually the people that depend on him. So yeah. that's why I don't like to have to depend on a motherfucker. Because they, at some point or another, will use it against you. And it's not even all the time on purpose. It's just human nature for people to try to get over when they can and tell you, hey, I'm doing this for you. So why should I have to do this and this? Or I should be able to get away with these things. Or you should forgive me for these things because I do all of this. When no, right. at the end of the day, some shit should be like unforgivable. Some shit shouldn't be forgiven. Like threatening to kill somebody. Mm. Mm. And look up I the agree. uh look up the statistics of servicemen who have uh domestic abuse cases mm. against them. Yep. It's wow. they are the the top ones. When I say I mean police officers, military, um, even doctors, men in power in stress is a scary thing. One thousand percent facts. Um, I agree with everything that y'all said, and I'm so glad that she exposed him. And now I kind of want to know, like, what's going to happen next now? Now that he's been exposed and we put this out here, now what? I mean, the, the, the state may try and take up a case on their own. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're showing video of him just merely yelling in your face, and then what was killing me was the fact that they were in the loft area. If at any moment he would have, like, shoved her and the girl had the baby in her hands, she could have went know, over the dog, damn balcony. That was like a baby. Damn. Yeah. And I know that it stress looks like child the house was empty. It looked like they can't afford it. That's crazy. Did you see how empty it was? I did. Mm -hmm. Ain't no furniture in that bitch. I want to see what's going to happen mm -hmm. with Hold this. Up. This is sad. Somebody said, hmm? somebody said um, that Nikki comment was not needed. Why not? Why not? I, I want to know. Like, if somebody can make fun of another person's domestic violence situation and call it a lie and say it didn't happen and say, you know, you lied on your dead mama and you, and you, and you got shot on your good foot and all of this shit um, and he didn't do it and free Tory and all of that shit. If, if, if that can be done, I'm trying to understand under that same logic, why is it I can't make the comment about whether we should believe her about Meek Mill or not? Mm. Y'all see how that works? Mm -hmm. Of course I believe anything she says happened to her because that's how these niggas be. Of course I believe that at some point Meek Mills put his hands on a woman that's more famous and more powerful than him simply out of jealousy and frustration for not being able to get to her level no matter how hard he was trying at the time, even with her fucking help. So, yeah, like, I'm not disillusioned. I'm not delusional. I'm not like your fave. I know that these niggas be like that. But mm -hmm. I'm just making my point that once you go to hell, I'm going to remind you that you went to hell. <laughs> like, you can't, you know, be somebody trying to advocate for, you know, domestic violence and talk about how you were harmed and then turn around and see somebody get shot and be like, you, you, you jumped on your good foot. You got shot in your foot foot. Like, yeah, like... <laughs> We're, I'm sorry, okay? Mm -mm. <laughs> if we're going to be cold-blooded about it, be cold-blooded about it, bitch. And there's that. Speaking of being cold-blooded about things, oh my God. Um, I think that with this next situation, it was giving very much so cold-blooded, okay? Um, Monique Hicks and her son, Mr. Shalon, I'm not sure if the last name is Watkins or Jackson. I am confusion, okay? But his first name is definitely Shalon, all right? Um, Monique went over to uh, the Shannon Sharp show, the Club Shay Shay. Um, she was asked about her relationship with her child. She said they're still pretty much estranged. They're, they're separated. She says she's apologized. Um, according to her, she was specific in her apology. After that, what more do you want her to do? It's up to you to pretty much, you know, forgive. And if you're not trying to do that, then, you know, I guess she ain't trying to do it either. OK, now Shalon did come out and he had some things to say. 
um, about Miss Monique. And now I am going to play the video, but I'm, I'm, it's, it's pretty long, so I might not play the whole thing, but you guys will definitely get the gist of what um, this young man had to say. And then we'll hop into how Monique had her, um, I was going to say daddy, but I'm going to say Sydney, her husband, she had her husband up there to where he had um, more to say to her son than she did. Okay, so let's just go ahead and check this out real quickly. Question. I am sure. Yes, ma'am. Do they explain why they're uh, estranged? Does he talk about that? Because I don't know why. Well, she did. In, she did in interviews in the past where she said that she wasn't really interested in being a mom. She wasn't interested in being a wife. She more so was out here chasing her career. Um, and so <clears throat> that's pretty much what Neglect. it was. Yeah, she pretty much neglected him for her career. And okay. then, you know, um, once she even made her footing into her career, it wasn't like she necessarily repaired anything. It was more so as though she utilized the material things and what things that money can buy to replace her absence um, in his life. And then she ended up marrying someone else when he probably was like 15 or so, had kids with this man who he has known as his uncle. And you and you call your brother. You've now married this man. And, you know. He's still calling the man uncle while everybody else in the house is calling the man daddy. So I can imagine how much more of an outcast he felt then, you know. Um, but yeah, so basically she said in her interview that she is hoping the universe works everything out. And he the reason he came to the front was to say, stop your lies. I'm not trying to stop you from doing what you do. Just leave me out of whatever narrative you got going on, because you're not trying to pray to the to the universe and you don't hope for things to to get better and you know that so just don't be up here trying to create some bs and just keep it simple like no we're strange we're still trying to figure that out and then move on or don't speak on them at all and that's mm -hmm. kind of how he's feeling okay. um even though it is kind of part of her story i guess to tell as well but then you know if he don't want to be talked about i don't see any harm in putting a period sooner in the sentence versus later you know what i'm saying so even though i feel like he cleared her ass right i do mm -hmm. first and second video he cleared her but what i did feel is somebody that is hurt mm -hmm. and feels that the indifference means lack of care like for instance him saying oh she you know don't don't say you pray to the universe don't say you pray because neither one of us are actually putting forward any real effort I feel like that's something you say when you're angry and you're hurt that your parent is not being the parent for you that you feel like you deserve. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like that doesn't mean that they don't pray that it'll eventually work itself out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I feel like just because Monique ain't always what she's supposed to be doesn't mean that she doesn't love her son. Because really not loving you would not would be not doing anything for you at all. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it sounds like he admitted himself to running through money that she did give him. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. It sounds like she was present. And when he had his baby, you know, she made sure he was okay. You know what I'm saying? Gave him mm -hmm. whatever they needed. So I feel like it's not even a case where you can say she completely neglected you like she didn't give a fuck. But just that she could never be the type of mother that you really needed or deserved and that's the mm -hmm. fucked up part but i i feel like he's trying to argue that she loves him at all and i feel like that's coming from a place of hurt because oh i didn't get that at all not the love you part because he even mentioned how much he even mentioned that he loved her at the end i think it was just how she showed up and she consistently kind of shows up that way i think i agree but when he was like you know it was specifically when he was saying how you don't make any real effort I don't make any real effort. So let me free you from saying that you pray to the universe for it to be better. Because if mm -hmm. she, to me, like the praying to the universe for it to be better is a form of, I know it's not right, but I still want it to be right. I love my son. Versus if I don't give a fuck about the little motherfucker, then I'm not praying about it getting better because right. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, that's when I'm, when I say, I feel like he was, she don't really like love it sound like you're saying she don't give a fuck about you. and I don't mm. think that's necessarily the case I just think she got more shit wrong with her than I blame her mama you know a lot of people like to say oh you know he's grown he's a grown man man listen when you become a parent them always your kids it don't matter how old they get and I hate it for her childhood because they didn't do right which resulted in her 
not doing him right. And I hope that he gets it right. You know what I'm saying? For his daughters. I think he got like two. Don't quote me. No, he has one daughter for sure. Um, but yeah, I feel like they ain't do Monique right, which is why she went out here hustling. Cause it seemed like to me, she probably had something to prove because she often was like thrown away as a kid. Yeah. So she had to get out here and prove some. And it resulted in, you know, her child not having her the way that he could have. And it kind of sucks because when you do that as a parent, in my personal opinion, I just feel like you subject them to being likely treated as you were with the child. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I mean, she, I, I mean, I don't know how old she was. I mean, she was young. Maybe she wasn't thinking about that. You know, a lot of people do, you know how they say you always think you got time as far as when a person passes away or whatever. Like sometimes you still think you got time to like to, to just show up or get it right. And she and never did. I think Sydney had a lot to do with it. Y'all. It's also your emotional capacity. What a lot of people don't understand is that when you don't feel you know, connection or support from your parents, when you grow up, you can't give it to your kids. Mm -hmm, like, you can't I remember, give what you don't have. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, like, for instance, because my dad had that like detachment, like he would force himself to be affectionate and mm -hmm. it would feel uncomfortable because it was uncomfortable for him. But he knew he needed to do it so that he would be like his parents. So he would force it. But I could still feel that he's forcing the affection. So it still feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like for me personally, I will grow up kind of not really knowing how to be affectionate with people until I'm like fully given allowance. Mm -hmm. then I will give affection but up until then I don't know if I should hug you I don't know if I you know what I'm saying like I don't mm -hmm. <laughs> like I feel like I, I don't know what I should be doing and I know mm -hmm. that's a reflection of him mm -hmm. not fully being comfortable with being affectionate so even though you know we can't always blame our childhoods they have their effect on us anyway so Monique not being able to give to her children I feel like it's probably a reflection of her childhood which we know it was fucked up absolutely like, molested by her brother and nobody in her family gave a fuck like absolutely 1000% I feel like he truly heavily resents the hell out of his mom and I feel like whenever he gets to that place where he wants to make things better or whatever the case is or even if they may have a slight disagreement you know what I'm saying I think that what may I don't know him this is my assumption this is my opinion my overlooking of the situation I could be absolutely wrong Based on how Monique did this interview with Sydney, makes me feel like she allows that man to overstep his boundaries, in my opinion. I think she has, she allows him to just kind of do too much. I would get frustrated with that if you're a step parent, but I'm trying to talk to my mama. I'm trying to have no. a like, what we got going on is between us. And I think that she allows him too much space to, to interject. And I think that he probably the main person that be cutting that boy off when he be trying to, you know, express himself as he said. Yeah, so, and because of her fucked up upbringing, her thinking that her husband is the only male that showed pure loyalty to her, I could see her being in a situation where she gonna put that man over the relationship with her children. Mm -hmm. Huh. And it's yeah, they need to sit down. They do. Because mm -hmm. I feel like the son is definitely mm -hmm. still hurt. Because no matter how many times he said it was gonna be his last response, that nigga still got up there the next day looking he home. Did. So uh, I was, was hoping the one today was the last one, please. Oh, wow. I didn't know there was some today mm -hmm. about the text messages. Fine. And I just feel like it, it's more of a signifier that he's still hurt, that he's still going through shit. And I also feel like you said you blew through forty five thousand dollars. And that made me feel like on some level, you feel like she'll always be there to come and save you. But right now you don't need her so you can give her your ass to kiss. But on some level, I feel like he was being like a spoiled rich kid. You know what I'm saying? On some mm -hmm. level. Not for real, for real. But like, you telling me you blowing through a whole bunch of money. You having a kid, even though you can't financially support one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, being even being homeless almost feels like, were you homeless because you had to be? Or because you were doing it as like an act of defiance to your mother? Because you know niggas do stuff like that. Like, I need help, but I'm pissed off at you, so I'm not going to ask you for help. And it'll probably be more of an embarrassment to you for people to find out that your son is living on the streets than anything. So I'm just going to be out here instead of, you know, being smart, taking care of yourself, managing your own shit. Because really, when he was talking, like, about what they did do for him, like, parents do do that shit for their kids. Mm -hmm. But they should not have to do that shit 
for their kids. But according to him, she chose to do that shit. Yeah, yeah. That was my thing. Like when it comes yeah, to the finances, yeah. yeah. Like don't throw that up in his face that we did this and that for you when it was a choice that y'all chose to make. But you needed it though. I that's saw what, one that's what, comment. But he did say when it came to the car, they was gonna put their own money down. Mm -hmm. So it seems like when you mentioned him being homeless, I could see that. I could see him being homeless on his own to show that I don't really need your shit. I think a lot right. of kids may do that to where like I don't need you. Let me figure it out on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw one comment though from Karen and said, um, prayer without work is dead. Um, and mm -hmm. I feel like that's a good point because he one of the things, <laughs> huh? In his video, I think he said that. He did oh, say he that. Said that. Okay, mm -hmm. somebody in the comments said that too. Karen did. And I'm I, I understand the dynamics of it and that they need to have a conversation, mm -hmm. but I'm also a firm believer in when you have the ability to express your traumas and your shortcomings, you then have the responsibility to work through them. Um and I think that that's where she's at. She's talked about her traumas and stuff. Um, I think she should work through them and, you know, think about how that impacted her son. Because at some point, it's like, yes, this happened to you, but what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Callie, girl, I'm I'm not exactly faulting him, but whose responsibility was it to not blow through the forty five thousand dollars if it was not his? I, I don't know what you mean. mean. Mm -hmm. I do understand because I do feel like somebody said earlier that it just shows he had a, a lack of, of, you know, routine. And, you know, she obviously did not set up the best support system for him to be able to handle that type of money. Granted, I'll give y'all all of that. My she point don't even handle her money good. Did she say she had to borrow from Kevin? Hello. Hello. But my point is the the mental the thought process a lot of the times is when you have a parent that you know feels guilty for not being there for you and their way of remedying not being there is to throw money at you yeah. you know you can get money from them if you really need to therefore you can spend money you know you shouldn't really spend and make decisions you know you probably really shouldn't make because you know that you can press on mommy's guilt button and get whatever you want to get get from her and i think sydney but probably comes huh but can he if the whole thing is i don't want to i want to show you that i don't even need you he can though he can because they don't even he doesn't have to ask for anything and they're offering him shit and it's a control <laughs> mechanism, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Because then it's like, I'm going I'm, I'm to do the same thing. If Every time you give me something, you turn around and throw it up in my face of what you did. Yes. And I agree about that, which is probably why he started not doing, you know, taking anything and felt like I'm going to just go be fucking homeless, bitch. You know what I'm saying? But because, I mean, I know he felt like that would embarrass her. And that's like sticking it to her in a way and fucking Sydney's ass. But I was saying, I feel like, you know, Sydney probably takes that mindset of feeling like he's protecting more from her son being like a gimme, gimme kid and just kind of resting on his elbows. No respect, y'all. But a lot of young black men use any excuse possible to not fully thrive in this world. And I'm not saying that's him, but I'm just saying I see so many of them that all they need is one traumatic experience. And that's the reason why they've been a bum their whole fucking life. Right. Is the world you know, is against you every yeah. day. You gotta mm -hmm. use a king when he get home. You know, <laughs> You know, for, I even found myself asking, "What what ethnicity is the girl he got pregnant?" Like I, you know, what I'm saying, like she looks, mm, she looks very light skinned I don't know, she could be mixed, but she looks very bright skinned Okay, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's a criteria for these types of niggas sometimes. So please don't get me wrong, y'all. He mm -hmm. cleared Monique. He was the only one that could read her down to her fucking toenails because DL couldn't do it. He you know, what I'm, saying? So I'm not blaming him for for his experience or anything, but I'm just pointing out how it's not as simple as he's just, you know, the Victim. kid that's, that's been disregarded and not cared for at all. If you can say your mom has shown up for you, it, you know, it just kind of shows that there are a lot of emotions involved and that's understandable. Yeah. I do think that they definitely need to have a talk when they are at that place because it's clear that neither one of them are there, but hopefully they, you know, whenever they can get to that place, because I feel like, I, I know Monique goes around and tells everybody else like what she went through in her childhood and stuff. But I wonder if she has actually sat down with her son and told him 
what she was like really going through at the time that he felt left out. And I feel like with everybody calling that man daddy and those are the kids and you got your family yes. all these years later, I think that he still continues to feel left uh -huh. out. And because of that, she could potentially mishandle him at times, which then re-triggers him to respond to her um, in the way that and he I does. wonder. I wonder what the situation is with the two oldest sons because I mean, two of the two youngest that she got, I don't know. Cause they say that middle child was somebody that wasn't her biological child and you know, the relationship with that man sour. So she doesn't really, you know, have a relationship with that son, mm -hmm. but the two youngest that she had with Sydney, I was just like, I wonder what, what their, what they mental is like, I wonder how much they're being spoiled and, and taken care of because when I saw both of them, they was like towering over her. And I mean, you know, in, in more ways than one, I'm not trying to be no, I'm not trying to, you know, but sometimes mm -hmm. when I see big ass fucking kids, I just wonder, was you just giving the kids all of the shit that they wanted and not telling them no to nothing? Like, cause you, gym. But, but the kids look spoiled as fuck, bitch. <laughs> kids that's look a, like, you know, that's a possibility for, for sure. I'm on top of the jeans, you know, their jeans that they have, you know, um, but yeah, let me see what these the oldest. Huh? I thought Shallon oldest son. Yeah, he is the oldest. I was just talking about their jeans. No, no, no. Somebody in the comments said oh. Shallon is the middle. And I'm like, I thought No, he he's not. He's our oldest, and he says that in the video. He's our right. oldest son. And he was the only one around back in the day when she was like first hit, you know, getting a parker show and all of that. It was just I looked up pictures. You know, because I was like, I'm about to go find a picture. Well, no, 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 no. See, I'm sorry, uh, buddy. Um, somebody saying that, you know, the oldest was adopted. But see, y'all got to know they all went to school together. That's why Sydney said that he knows her, um, Shalon's dad very well. They all went to school together. She was with Shalon's dad first. Then she got with Mark Jackson. That's when she adopted that kid. Then when okay. they soured. Then she went and she got with um Sydney and she had those other two kids. And from my understanding, Sydney has another child outside of them, which is why Mo says he has three kids or something. Um, so yeah, yeah. No, we, we get it. She showed up with the money, but not with the emotional um and actual physical support. We understand she was but the thing about it is y'all are gonna judge her more than y'all judge everybody. I said the same thing about DL. DL is on, you know, when he had the situation with King Harris, he made a comment to me talking about how old the sacrifices your parents make for you. And I'm like, them, they didn't make no motherfucking sacrifices for them kids. They dropped them kids off at their mama house and went about their fucking way and threw them some money to make everybody feel good. OK, mm -hmm. so and whatever else they needed. <clears throat> OK, but mm -hmm. outside of that, like them people didn't make no fucking sacrifices. I can't stand when entertainers act like they made some huge sacrifice for their children to have all of this money and access. No, you didn't. You followed your dream. Your child Thank probably you. made the most sacrifice because they didn't have the everyday home parent. They didn't have somebody there with them all the time making it about them because when you're entertainer, it's about you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You have to make a conscious effort to be there for it and really give them the support that they need when you somebody that has to be pulled away the way entertainment pulls people away so i just kind of felt like you know when people make that comment all them sacrifice make no motherfucking sacrifice. i have a question as we're talking about entertainers and them not you know actually being there for their kids how they should i do have a question in a few years a few decades do you guys think we would hear that from beyonce's children no, no. I didn't think so either. She's I feel like, like even with her work with her. <laughs> so what? she created the environment to bring them to work with her. So yes. they don't feel like that. Because my Cause mom was there. there. I went to mm -hmm. work with her. So I didn't yeah, feel, because... you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so yeah. I think it would be the same way. Yeah. Because she, but then also it goes to the fact that they had an interest in being parents. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think we were here that either. Uh Ebony says, um, thank you for the super chat. It makes you wonder if she out here borrowing money from folks, then what exactly does Sydney do? What is his job? Son seems stuck, but very articulate. Thank you so much for the super chat. He do what she do, right? He don't he work for her, he so make, she ain't he, making money. He, he ain't making yeah. money. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. But, see, but here's mm -hmm. the issue. The issue is if you're gonna worship a nigga, then you don't need to be asking other people for checks. 
you removing yourself from the head of your fucking table so he could sit at the head of the table should mean that he's bringing in more money than you, bitch. And That's shouldn't be up there trying to throw in somebody else's face what all they did for them financially. Hmm. And you couldn't even meet your end of the bargain. But you're trying to, you're trying to put sour on that young man. We did this. We did that. And why like the that. fuck? Why the fuck did Sydney? Why did Sydney have the capability of hiding that account from Shallon? That's another thing that pissed me off that I he didn't said. Catch that. That's what he said. He said that they had a, a account that she had set aside for him. And Sydney basically lied anything. to him and said that the account wasn't there or that he didn't know anything about it. Fast forward, you know, I think that was the 45000 that he ended up blowing through was mm -hmm. that account that they hid from. Well, really, that Sydney hid from him. And I'm like, how do you even have a relationship where you're allowing this man to be the, the speaker for you between you and your fucking son? That's not his son. I just feel like Monique is on the dick juice like a crackhead, just like a lot of these other women are. And um, even though I don't want to fully believe, because when it came to the Tyler Perry thing, the Oprah thing, I still feel I'm like her. Yeah, her gripes with them, I feel like are 100% are real. Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel like what she's done is felt that people will support her and now trying to capitalize off that fact in a way that's now disingenuous. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm aggravated with her right now. Cause I feel like you shouldn't have been answering your son on the fucking internet. You should have been having private conversations with your son. And if you couldn't get through to him via text messages or phone, you don't get on the fucking internet to speak to him. I didn't like Again, why is he texting? Shout out to Damon. Thank you for the super chat. Why this man texting your son through the phone? That was enough to let me know about the strained mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. that y'all have that Sydney couldn't even text your son. And then you want to call out, oh, you done this with your dad and this, that, that, and the other. I kind of was with Shalon. Like, don't be bringing my daddy up. Are we talking about me and my mama right now? That's what we talking about. And I'm really not talking about you. I did say daddy, but I'm high key. I'm really talking to my mama. And even if I did bring you up slightly, it was not warranted for you to give me this much commentary, this much feedback and response. Like, absolutely not. Um, Thank you so much, Just Patches, for the super chat. I think he does desire his mom, but he is not desiring the package that is her and her quote unquote daddy. Nobody um, would. Who the fuck wants to deal with a woman that can't even speak for herself and needs to have somebody else talking for her every time she say some shit? That's even aggravating on them videos to have to watch him give a long ass monologue and then refer to you and you just kind of hopping in and don't know what to say. Oh my God, today. Um, thank you, Shakia, for the uh, super chat. By the way, Monique has four sons. Second son, Mark, is an adoptive son from her second marriage, whom she is no longer close with. He was raised by her second husband, Mark. Thank you so much for that in the super chat. Um, Brianna says they need to bring Eva back so we can know what happened uh, with her and Mike Sterling, because mm. there is a live out there with her questioning his whereabouts. Mm. Ah, Question for the his super chat. Like where he's at today. Not went ghost. That's scary to me because you know people turn into their characters sometimes. <laughs> like, oh, bitch, yeah. do you think you mad him over there? What's going on? Ooh. And I got to huh. catch up on the latest episode. Too. And I got to watch this retarded ass. <sighs> Look like they might have got some new writers on there, though. Hopefully. I can appreciate it. Acting still me. Uh, thank you, Dequatia, for the super chat. I also noticed that in the interview that Monique had a huge lack of discernment when it comes to her relationship with her industry peers by thinking that everybody was her friend. Thank That's you so true. much. She really did. Because why would you? The discernment for me, the issue is the fact that Kevin Hart told you he was going to support you and you picked up the phone, jumping the gun to call the network to say, oh, he's going to do this and he's going to do that. Can you let That's him fair. come through? Like, just yeah. because he gave you that money, like, can you can you get some paperwork? I don't know. It's just like it made me it made me think a lot about her mindset. Like, she sounds good when she's talking because she's talking this soft tone and some stuff makes sense. But it's like, is it really clicking? Maybe it's not, and it's no disrespect, but maybe it's not, and that's why you need Sydney to speak on yeah, your behalf. Three sides, yeah. Mm -hmm. True. It's not adding up to me. Anything else on this family? Uh, thank you for the super chat. There's one more. Um, uh, thank you, Lisa. Not that Monique is right. She is wrong. Sydney is the first man to defend her. She doesn't understand in defense and uh, manipulation, but she needs to call her son and find a path to healing. Thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah. yeah and I also have to be honest and say he has to be receptive too. 
You know, yeah. we got to be open to wanting to have that. And she has to fully understand that this has to happen without your counterpart. You yes. see, you and him, because I feel like even though Sydney was around, he wasn't yours. So the child that went went through the thick of it with you was your oldest child. So you don't need to include this person. Like, I mean, you just don't like. Talk what to happened? You. What's wrong? Did everybody keep talking about Melamar? Something happened that I missed? I've been oh, seeing his name. Been? I saw his name, but for some reason, I thought they were referencing when we was talking about an uneducated and a broke man. Where no, is that? Melon Martell tonight, ladies. Like somebody, and that's not the first time I've seen it. So now I'm like wondering if something happened. That's what I'm wondering. Did something happen? Or y'all talking about them articles that we, I feel like. Talking about last week on your channel, yeah, I think. We talked about that. About the kids and the, you know, situation with that. The claims on be him being unhinged or something like that, erratic right. behavior. I think new we talked about case. that. It's a new one. I think that's what Bondi. I think we talked about that on Bondi's channel. Not from yeah, last. Week. Oh, all right. Yeah, I think we. Oh, did. All right. Okay. Child, all right. Don't be scaring us like that, because you know we never know what the fuck could happen with the two of them. Hilarious. All right, y'all. Anything else on Monique and the people? I think that's mm. it. I think that wraps up our show. We thank you guys so much for being here with us tonight. Definitely make sure that you're following us on all platforms. Subscribe to all channels as we will be rotating. And you want to make sure that you have your notifications on so you know who is up next. Okay. Um, yeah. Follow us on everything. And we will catch you guys in the next one. Bye, y'all.